Christmas baubles are great for beginners because you can practice your texturing and create a fun Christmas scene. In this video, I'll show you how you can make a Christmas bauble and give you some ideas for how you can randomly texture them in interesting and fun ways. If you want a good intro to texturing, then do check out my beginner's guide to nodes. Also, if you like what I do, then do check out my website and the playlists on this channel for more great content. So I'm in Blender 3.0. I've got my screencast keys down the bottom here and I'm in the general scene. I'll start off by deleting the cube and shift A to add and add in a UV sphere. Let's make sure it's above the floor. So G, Z, then one to grab it in the Z axis, one blender unit. And that makes it sit above the floor nicely. Now it's shaded flat at the moment, so we can right click and shade smooth. It's still a little bit lumpy, so we can add a subdivision service modifier and that will smooth it out. So under the modifiers, add modifier, subdivision surface. And one level should be fine and rendering it too. That's great. Most computers should be comfortable with that. Now you can easily create a sort of metal bit at the top if you want, just by creating a cylinder and scaling it down. That's not really the point of this exercise. This is more about materials and experimentation. So of course you can do that if you like. So I'll create a couple of these, Shift D and then X to duplicate along the X axis and another one this side. So Shift D and then X to duplicate that way. Now let's go to the shading tab. So we've got our lovely baubles there. On the first one, let's create a new material. So add new. So first of all, let's give you a challenge of creating a gold material. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully work that out. We can come to the base color and give it a sort of yellowy orangey sort of material somewhere around here, maybe a tiny bit darker. The main thing is the metallic. So we turn that up and we've got a sort of gold looking material here and we can put the roughness down and give it that shininess. You can go right down if you want, really shiny gold, but I think just a little bit away somewhere around there. So we've done our first bauble. So your next challenge is to create a silver one. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, you might have chosen a different one of these, that's fine, or we can press Shift D on this one and I'll move it to here. And you might think, oh, I'll go into the color and start changing it, but obviously both of them are sharing that material, so they'll both change. So I'll undo that. I'll come across to here and I'll create a new material. The great thing about this button is that it creates a new material based on the old one. So it's exactly the same as the old one, but now I can start changing it. And let's just take away the saturation. I could also come down here to take away the saturation as well on that slider. And you can make it a light or dark silver. It's up to you. We could give it a real sort of chrome look like this with even more roughness. And that's great. We should probably name these as well so it doesn't get too confusing. And I'll go to my original and call that gold. So do remember this button's very handy because you can create a new material based on the old ones. So I didn't have to change the metallic and I already had a roughness that was close to what I wanted. Okay, let's click on the next one, create a new material. This time I'm going to give it a texture as the base color. So I'll zoom out just a touch, Shift A to add, or you can obviously go to the add menu here. And we've got texture and let's go to something like a checker texture just there. Let's plug this into the color and we've got a checker material and we can change the colors just here. Let's change that to a bit darker. Now it doesn't look very baubly. That's because it's not very shiny. So let's try and bring the roughness down. That's better, but it's still looking a bit plasticky, which might work for you. Most of these baubles have a metallic look and I think that looks a lot better. Okay, so for your next challenge, I want you to try out different textures. So add a few more balls into your scene, give them lots of different textures and you can experiment with the colors and the scale for different effects. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully you did something like duplicate and shift Z so it doesn't move in the Z axis. We'll move that to the front so I can see it. And a useful tip here is if you have the Node Wrangler installed, so edit, preferences, add-ons, and then type in Node. There's the Node Wrangler. Make sure that's ticked, it's really useful. Then close this down. Now, if I click on a texture and press shift S, I can swap it. So shift S is to swap your texture and I can change it to something like the Musgrave and we've got that brilliant texture there. But what did I forget to do? Have a quick think. I forgot to create a new material here. So let's undo what I did there. I've got my checker material and let's name this checker. And now let's create a new one for this object here. So this new material slot here, click on my texture. And instead of deleting this, adding a new one, we can press Shift S. So Shift S to swap and then choose that Musgrave texture. And we've got an interesting sort of black and white texture there. So I'll just quickly speed this up add another ball and another texture to it. I'll choose the Veronoi because this one actually has some color, but we'll talk a bit more about color in a second. But hopefully you've added some different ones with color and without and experimented. Okay, so I've got some interesting things going on with my new textures for these different objects, but there's much more we can do here. Let's take the checkered pattern, for example. 
I'll just change the scale slightly. So it's a bit more interesting like this. Now the great thing about black and white textures, they can also influence other channels, not just the color. And as an example of that, if I plug the color into the roughness, I've got some bits that are shiny and some bits that are rough. So it's taking the black and white information and converting it to roughness. Now the white will always equal one and the black will always equal zero. And you can have anything in between. So if I change the black here to a slightly more gray, we can see it's changing the roughness on here and making it slightly more rough as we move towards white. So black and white is really useful for these other inputs. We could even add this to the metallic. I'll go a bit more extreme though and bring it back to the black. And now the black bits, they're very shiny, but they're not metallic. There's no roughness in them and there's no metallic, so it's a sort of shiny plastic. Whereas the white, they are completely metallic, but they're completely rough as well. I think it would be better if we swap these over. So let's shift A, add, and under color, we've got an invert. Remember, you can also search for these. So if I type in invert, we've got the invert node there. If I put that into the roughness, it switches it round. So the white colors now are the shiny ones and the black is fully rough. But the white is also metallic and the black has a sort of more plasticky dielectric, which is non-metallic look. So that's quite interesting. I'm going to take out that metallic link because I think it's better. So your challenge then is to look at one of your other black and white balls and change the roughness value using a texture. Pause the video and have a go at that. So let's take this musgrave for example. I can simply take the height information from here and plug it into the roughness. So the black, as you can see, is all shiny because it's not got any roughness and the white is rough. Now we can adapt this slightly. How about we take out the base color? So we've just got white now with some bits being shiny and some bits being rough. And then we could plug a different texture into the color. So let's bring this down, shift A to add, and try a different texture like the wave texture or something. Put that over here, plug that into the color, and let's add some distortion. And there we've got a sort of randomly shiny rough bauble with a wave texture instead. What about if I've got a black and white texture like this that I want to add some color to? Let's go across to this noise one and see what we can do. So the noise input does have a color slot. And when I plug that in, it's got random noise, but I can be a bit more controlled about this. Let's put the factor back in. Sometimes they're labeled factor, sometimes they're labeled height, but they're the ones that have the black and white information instead of the color. This time I'm going to add a color ramp. So shift A to add, converter, and then color ramp, or you can just search for it, remember? So color ramp there, plug it in, and we don't actually see much difference. But I can increase the blacks and increase the whites by moving these sliders along. Or I can click on the color down here and change this to an actual color. So let's bring this up to something a bit brighter and across to the reds. And click on the white one and change that to maybe a blue. I can then bring them in, push them out as I see fit. What happens though if I plug this into the roughness? How does it know how dark or bright they are? Well, we've got the blue selected there. If I go to the blue input, it's pretty much taking this value along here. There's a bit more to it than that, but generally speaking, look at this slider for the effect the color will have on these inputs, which actually want black and white. So it converts it to black and white just by looking at this color and looking at the value here, which is the same as this slider down here. The same for the red. If I click on the red, we can see that that's darker. So the red bits you can probably see are a bit more shiny because they've got less roughness because this red is a darker value. But generally speaking, you shouldn't really plug a color into one of these slots. It's much better to have a black and white image. Then you can see what's going on more clearly. So I'll undo that. If I duplicate this and bring it down, my color ramp here, come from my factor here into the color ramp and from the color here into the roughness, I can just take the saturation out of these. So the red saturation into the middle and the blue, click on the blue saturation again into the middle. And now it's a lot clearer which bits are shiny and which bits aren't. And I can change these with the value to make them shiny or not. So as a challenge to you, use the color ramps in between your textures and your principled BSDF to change both the colors and the roughness. And remember for the roughness, you only want to change the value, not the color. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully you've had a bit of fun experimenting with these. You can also, if I click on this Voronoi one, this is quite a fun one and there's lots you can do within the Voronoi and change these types of distortion and get some really interesting effects. I quite like this one with the smooth and the 
Chebby Chev. And if I put the roughness up, it looks really sort of iridescent like this. You can stack these kind of textures to make some interesting results. It doesn't always work out, but it can be fun just to experiment. So let's take this one here and duplicate it. And remember to create a new material. Let's plug something into our noise texture. So Shift A to add, texture, and then Veronoi. Plug the distance into the vector and see what happens. That's pretty crazy and fun. Change the colors of this. And you can always add colors in by pressing the plus symbol. And then we can change these around and make them really good fun and adapt them as we see fit. I think this one would be better with just a nice lot of roughness and some metallic or fun disco style there. So stacking these up can lead to some quite fun results. So that's well worth experimenting with as well. So if you want to set up a scene with these, then we can easily put in a floor. So Shift A to add, mesh and then plane, scale that up. And we can add a texture to this, so new. And the great thing about the Node Wrangler is that we can really easily add PBR textures. First of all, download one from the internet. A great place is Polyhaven, and here's some nice old planks that they've got. So something like that will do, and then just go to the download. Once you've done that, make sure your principal BSDF is selected and press Control Shift T, and then find that texture. So here's a wooden plank. So here's a wooden floor texture that I downloaded, and you should have a normal, so select that, a roughness, so select that. There's an ambient occlusion you can use. Not all textures have them, but you can select that as well. A displacement, so select that, and I'm holding down Control to select multiple maps. There's the metalness that are screws or nails, and the color is the last one there. Don't worry if you haven't got a metalness or an occlusion, but select all those at the same time, and then principal texture setup, and you can see it sets it up for you. And there's my wooden material, which is looking great. Now it does have a displacement, which I won't go into, but if you want to learn more about that, then check the link in the description for that. Now we are still in material preview mode, and you can use EV, so we can add some ambient occlusion, some screen space reflections. It's looking a bit better but we are much better off in cycles. So let's change across to cycles because we've got a realistic render engine then. I have to change my material preview mode to render preview. It's very dark because we've got a gray background. So you can change the world in the shader tab just here. If you can't see your nodes, press the home key and that will show you them. And you can see we've just got this gray background. So you need to download an HDRI. Polyhaven also has HDRIs which you can download. So download one of these. Back in the shader editor, Shift A to add, texture, environment texture and then open it up in this image so i think something like an interior room like this would work best i'll open that up plug that in and now we've got some lovely lighting and reflections for our baubles i'll change across to my gpu and turn on the denoise and that should work a little bit faster now and there we have some christmas baubles hopefully you've learned something here and enjoyed it and had a good opportunity to practice your texturing skills have fun do share your results with me on the discord or instagram Links again in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.